The PreSonus AudioBox Go is the least expensive audio interface you can buy that doesn't sound like an inexpensive audio interface. And I've been testing this side by side with an audio interface that costs three times the price. And listening to the audio back to back, I honestly can't tell the difference. And later in this video, I will give you a chance to hear the audio quality back to back, both with the PreSonus PD70 and with a high end shotgun microphone. But I first wanna go over some things that really jump out at me about this microphone, and I'm not gonna take you through all the nitty gritty specs because you can read that on the website, but after using this for about a month or so, there's certain things and features about this microphone that are really blowing me away, particularly at this price point. And the first one is this super clean preamps, and this is something that really I didn't even ever imagine would be possible with the interface at this price point. This unit has 50 decibels of gain, which is a reasonable amount of gain, certainly enough to power the PreSonus PD70 or something like the Shure SM7B. It will be strong enough to drive even the most demanding dynamic microphones. But one thing that is different about this unit from just about any other unit that I've tested lately is that I can crank it to full volume. I can use that whole 50 decibels of gain with the microphone and I get absolutely no background hiss or any amp hiss whatsoever. Now, if I compare this to another recorder I use quite a bit, I've got the Zoom H5 recorder, that has 52 decibels of gain. But if I get anywhere near sort of 60% on that, I get amp hiss. So that unit, although it's advertised with sort of its 52 or 54 decibels of gain, it doesn't actually have that amount of usable gain unless you're willing to put up with that hissing in the background. Where the AudioBox Go has 50 decibels of gain, but it's 50 decibels of usable gain. You can use the whole 50 decibels of gain and you are going to get no audible background noise or background amp hiss. And the next thing that often lets down a lot of budget audio interfaces is the digital to analog conversion and the the analog to digital conversion. And what this is, is when I'm using this microphone, this PreSonus PD70 is an analog microphone. It's taking the sound from my voice and the vibration that it is causing in this microphone, and it is sending an analog signal into the audio interface itself. The audio interface then has to convert that analog signal to a digital signal, which is something that my computer can understand and my computer can record. And often it is this point or at this point in the process that a very inexpensive audio interface lets itself down. And you just don't get the clarity. It sounds sort of muffled or often it will sound digital, like, like it's a robot talking or something like that. And this unit just sounds super clean. It just, it sounds really right on par with interfaces that cost three three times the price. Now, the other thing that an audio interface does is when you are listening with headphones, it has to take the digital information that it's got in that computer, it's got to convert it back to analog and make it something that your headphones can hear and that you can understand and listen to. This is now the digital to analog conversion. We're converting the signal back. This is another point where inexpensive audio interfaces often let themselves down. And I sat here for about an hour playing all different types of music and going back and forth between an audio interface that costs three times the price and the audio box go, just switching my headphones back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And really, I really struggled to tell whether there was any difference. And I even thought I could not trust my old man ears and I brought my 15 year old daughter and she listened to both of them. And in the end, she thought the audio box go, if anything sounded marginally better. So there's certainly no problem with that return digital to analog conversion. And there's certainly no problems with the amplifier for the headphones. It sounds great. You are not going to notice the difference between this and an interface that costs three times the price. And the performance of this unit is just, is not only reflected just in your use of it. It's also a 24 bit 96 kilohertz unit. So this is a very, very high and audio quality. This is something that I personally have never seen at, on a unit of this price point. Often they are 16-bit. Often they don't go any higher than 44 hertz. So this is really probably as far as its ability to capture detail in your audio. 
it's round about twice as good as the other budget audio interfaces you're going to find in this sort of under $100 price category. Now, because it's driven by a USB cable, it's got a little USB plug in the back of the unit, you are able to drive this thing with your computer and your laptop, and you don't need any extra power run into the thing. But beyond that, you can actually run it with any sort of USB-C device that has enough power to drive the unit. And I can actually use it with my iPad Pro, which when we're talking about a unit that's supposed to be an on-the-go unit, this is really, really good because it means you don't even have to take a computer with you. You can just take your sort of USB-C device like an iPad Pro and do your recordings or podcasts or create your music. And it just creates a very, very small sort of portable studio setup. Now, I really love what they've done with the design of this unit to keep it small. They put all your inputs on the back of the unit and they've put all your dials and controls on the front of the unit. So what this has done is this has allowed them to make a very, very small form factor. And if you had like an XLR on the front of it, you would have to make this thing probably 20, 30, up to 50% bigger. So by putting all the plugs on the back and all the dials on the front, they've been able to keep this as small as possible. They've also done a really clever thing with the actual design of the case itself. It's kind of somewhat a wedge shape with sort of rounded corners at the back, which means if you've got a bag that is just jammed full of gear and you're trying to get every last bit of space out of that bag, the unit itself, because the back is kind of wedge-shaped, if you just get enough room to just get that back in, once you put it in and start to push in, it's actually going to open up the bag and actually kind of make its own space. Another nice touch, which you see on more expensive audio interfaces, but often you don't see on budget audio interfaces, is you have separate volume control for your studio monitors and your headphones which I think really, I find units, if you're using studio monitors and you're using headphones, if you don't have separate control, it is a super clumsy and difficult thing. And the fact that they managed to fit this in and make it work on this really inexpensive interface, I think is really clever. And I think really puts that level of functionality sort of up there with the more expensive interfaces. You've also got your separate gain control for your instrument in and your XLR in. You've got a phantom power button that when you click in, you get a little light so that you know that it's on or off. Off. And with both the instrument in and the XLR in, you actually get a little red light. And if you're getting clipping or distortion or you're sort of maxing out your signal, those flash on just to let you know you're clipping. So they basically got all the features you need into this inexpensive, tiny little interface. And the mix control, this is something that drives me absolutely crazy with audio interfaces that don't have this. And this just allows you to control the volume of the audio coming out of your computer compared to the volume coming from your mic microphone into the unit. So this little tweak back and forth allows you to control those levels. And if you can't control those levels and there is a big discrepancy between the two, it's just kind of almost impossible to use the interface like that. So I think this is actually a pretty big thing, even though it's just a tiny little dial on the unit itself. All right, I told you I would give you an audio comparison between the AudioBox Go and the interface that costs three times the price. Everything you've heard so far is running from the PreSonus PD70 straight into the AudioBox Go and then into my computer. Now you're listening to the PreSonus PD70 running into the Audion ID4. This is an interface that costs three times the price and essentially has the exact same functionality as the AudioBox Go. And you should find that the audio sounds virtually identical. I did these side by side and anytime I thought I could tell a little bit of difference, I would notice that it was just the microphone placement. So when comparing these two interfaces, actually the microphone you choose or the placement of any given microphone is going to make a much bigger difference than actually the audio interface itself. So I suspect you should not be able to tell the difference between these two interfaces. All right, now we're listening to the AudioBox Go going into the Deity S-Mic 2S. This is a short shotgun microphone. It, this microphone doesn't perform really well in tiny reverberant rooms like this, but this will just give you a base audio sample. So now we're using the 48 volts phantom power to power this microphone. And just so you can hear how that sounds compared to the PreSonus PD70. Now we're on the same microphone, but we're running into the Audient ID4. Once again, an interface that costs three times the price. Both units are using 48 volt phantom power to power the microphone. And I suspect you are not going to be able to tell the difference. And if you can, it will all come about down to me and how I place the microphone for each shot. Because I have spent hours actually testing these things back to back, just honestly because I was convinced that there's no way that the AudioBox Go could possibly sound as good as this more expensive audio interface. But 
in all my testing. I just could not tell the difference. Now we're back on the PreSonus PD70 running into the AudioBox Go, my most recommended audio interface under $100 right now. And if you're looking for the best price on this audio interface, I will put links in the description down below, my best price links, which actually take you through to a number of the top suppliers so you can instantly compare the prices between those suppliers and make sure you're getting the best deal on this audio interface. If you're interested in getting the best in audio and video with the gear that you can afford or the gear that you already have. That's what I do on this channel. So be sure to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit that bell notification.